Let's take a look at the interface and basic functions and controls within the Eagle Eye program. In the upper left part of the screen, of course, is the drop down menus. This line of information gives us the current status of our timing system. Right now I'm looking at a live image. The camera is currently running at 105 frames per second. Playback position, total, etc. That's all used during the review process. For instance, if we bring up a video here to review, you see I'm at playback position 53. That means I'm on frame 53. There's a total of 512 frames that were recorded for this file. Down in the lower left part of our screen are controls for reading races. Here's where we find the tabs for the races that need to be read. You can easily click between races by clicking on the different tab. Closing out a tab, you just simply click on the red X. And you can go back to live camera by clicking on the camera tab. You can leave a tab up if it's a longer race or it had a lot of athletes that still need to be read or if there was an issue that somebody might challenge something. You can leave that video up there or it can be listed in the history reel over on the right hand side. During the review process we have our timeline here and in this section this, this line consists of every frame that was recorded during that race from when you started recording to when you stopped recording. Right now I'm just left clicking on the timeline button and dragging it from left to right to get to a position on the timeline or during a, a position in that race that I need to review. These green marks here on the timeline are bookmarks. During the recording process when somebody is about to cross the finish line hit your spacebar. It's just a reference point, it's not precise, but it allows you to hit your control right arrow key and jump to that spot in that video. And then you can use your left and right arrow keys to dial it in frame by frame. Again to go back to live camera just click on the red X and we're back to a live image confirmation in the upper left hand corner. On the right side of our interface, we have a couple of buttons. First, the record button obviously starts and stops recording. You can use the F5 key on your computer's keyboard to also start and stop recording. You have the camera button, and we'll come back to what that does here in a second. And you have the history button. The history button gives a list of all the races that have been recorded to this computer's hard drive and stored on the computer's hard drive. If you rest your mouse on top of one of those races, you get file information for that particular race. For instance, I was running at 104 frames per second with the camera. There was 151 megabytes in size, etc. If I wanted to review one of those races, I just double click on it and it's automatically queued up. To delete one of these races, I just right click and delete. The camera button gives us our tab structure for controlling the system. For instance, the finish line tab gives us the calibration tool to align our camera. When selected, I have the option of using a vertical line, horizontal line, or both vertical and horizontal lines. I can change the color, I can change the thickness of those lines, but where these two lines intersect is exactly center of the image sensor on our camera. Once it's lined up properly on the finish line, I can then add a finish line. I just click Add Line, go over the top of the calibration line, left click, hold and drag down, and release. Then I can deselect the calibration line, or calibration tool, and I see my finish line. If the color and the thickness work for my setting and the color of track that I'm working with, then I can click the Lock Overlay button or feature and I can't manipulate that line anymore until I unlock it. This finish line will now appear on all recorded files from this point forward, assisting me in reading a race and determining when an athlete actually crosses the finish line. The Race Trigger tab gives us information regarding our wireless trigger. 
tells us which device we're actually listening to. The left and right channels showing that the signal is actually coming into the computer. We can arm the system from this tab as well by clicking the arm button. We can also use the manual start button. This is used for, say, a JV meet where FAT timing isn't required or a cross country or road race that, again, FAT is not required. The race results tab is the tab that gives us our information from the EVT file that's imported from the meet management program. Just click on the import button, find the EVT file that was created by the meet management program, and it's auto populated here with the events for that particular meet. And when you click on the different event, the corresponding names that are entered in that particular heat are listed below. The camera settings tab has what looks like a lot of information, but really the only thing to focus on is the camera list. This is actually only used if a user is, is operating with multiple cameras. For instance, if you have the capability of turning a race around because it's a really windy day, you can have a camera on the finish line and on the start line. And at any time during that day you want to spin that race around, you simply click on the camera that you want to record from. The record tab gives us information regarding our hard drive. So right now I'm recording, it tells me that I'm recording to my hard drive rather than the built-in memory on the computer. And it tells me with the available space on my hard drive, I can record for two hours and seven minutes. The adjustments tab gives us a control to adjust our camera. The exposure setting, I can drag, make the image brighter or darker. I can also change the frame rate. Right now I'm running at 105 frames per second. If I had a cross country event or a road race that I wanted to dial back the frame rate, I can type in 30 and then hit my enter key. And right now I'm running at 30 frames per second instead. To go back to uh, over 100 frames per second, I type in 105 and then I hit my enter key. And again, I'm back to the higher frame rate. And the Brightness Contrast Gamma here tab gives us uh, the option to fine tune our image. If I need a little bit more lighting, I just drag the contrast, etc. It's not hard to operate the system, and we believe the Eagle Eye Pro interface to be one of the most intuitive and easy to navigate. We're in the Eagle Eye program right now and looking at the basic functions and controls. First, make sure the wireless trigger is functioning properly with the system. Before the Eagle Eye Pro software is opened, make sure the USB audio adapter is plugged in directly to a USB port on the computer first. Go to the Race Trigger tab and check the device selected in the Device drop-down menu. You should see something that resembles C Media USB. With the wireless transmitter and receiver on, arm the system by clicking the Arm button or by pressing Control F12 on your computer's keyboard simultaneously. You have visual confirmation the system is armed with the red text armed in the upper right hand corner. Then give the wireless trigger a little rap on the face to simulate the sound of a starting gun. The green left and or right channel will spike with this little rap. With the time code running and the green text triggered in the upper right corner, we have now confirmed the wireless trigger is connected, functioning properly, and will indeed trigger the system when the gun goes off. Let's get our camera positioned on the finish line properly. Use the calibration feature in the finish line tab to align the camera. There are a couple of features that assist with aligning the camera. We recommend using both the horizontal and vertical option in the mode feature. Where these two lines intersect is exactly center of the image sensor on your video camera. The vertical line is lined up on the leading edge of the finish line. The horizontal line is lined up parallel to a lane line. 
The camera mounting kit included with the timing system allows for fine movement and positioning for alignment of the video camera in small, controlled increments. Once the camera is positioned correctly on the finish line, draw a finish line on top of the vertical calibration line. Click the Add Line button and your mouse will turn into a crosshair. On top of the vertical calibration line, left click and hold and drag down. And release. Once you've drawn your finish line and put a check in the lock overlay option, you can disengage the calibration tool. The finish line will now be visible in all recorded files helping identify the moment an athlete crosses the finish line. Now we can make adjustments to the image of our camera. First, make sure the iris on the lens of the camera is open all the way. This allows the maximum amount of light to come in at any given time and then control the brightness and darkness from within the program by adjusting the exposure. It's really the only item in the Adjustments tab that ever needs adjusting. Increase the brightness of the image by increasing the exposure setting. And vice versa, make the image darker by decreasing the exposure setting. Keeping in mind that the higher the exposure setting, the more susceptible the image is to motion blur. When the video is played frame by frame, the athlete or hip number could look blurry. And the lower the exposure setting, the darker the image is, but the athletes or the hip numbers will be clearer in frame by frame playback of the video. It's recommended that if you are in an environment that requires a higher exposure setting than 3000, Try adjusting the contrast in the Brightness Contrast Gamma tab. This dramatically increases brightness without sacrificing clarity. Now it's time to work with the race results portion of the timing application. Once the EVT file has been generated by the meet management software, such as from HiTech or Race Tab, it's saved in a folder specified by the meet management program. Go to the Race Results tab in Eagle Eye and click the Import button. Now browse to the location that that EVT file was saved to. And the information will populate in the Events section. When an event in the list is selected, the names corresponding to that race are listed down below in the Event Information section. Last in the setup process, click on the record tab. This area shows how long Eagle Eye can record for. In this case, I can record for 2 hours and 14 minutes and 16 seconds with the current 104 frames per second and available hard drive space I have on my computer. Now let's time a race. First, select the event that is next to be run on the track from the event list in the race results tab. Next, arm the system by pressing the Control and F12 buttons simultaneously on your computer's keyboard. Then give the wireless trigger a wrap and the timing system will then display the word triggered in green text and the time code in the upper left corner will be running confirming the system caught the sound of the gun starting the race. As the athletes approach the finish line, about 10 to 15 meters before crossing, Start recording by clicking the REC icon in the upper right part of the program, or by pressing the F5 key on your computer's keyboard. F5 is the hot key to start and stop recording. Once all the athletes have crossed the finish line, stop recording either by clicking on the REC button again, and, or by pressing F5 on the computer's keyboard. Eagle Eye automatically queues up the recorded race from the beginning. At this point, Let's take a look at a previously recorded race as an example. Reading a race is quite easy. Click and hold the timeline button and drag it to the right so the first finishing athlete comes into view. Then use the roller wheel on the mouse or the left and right arrow keys on the computer's keyboard to move the video frame by frame forward and or backwards.
Once the first part of the torso touches the finish line, press the corresponding number key of the lane assignment or hip number of the athlete and the time will populate next to the athlete in the event information section. Then scroll ahead to the next finishing athlete and hit the corresponding number key on your computer to the athlete's hip number or lane assignment. After all the competitors have been read, click on the Save Times button to create the results file the Meet Management software can import. The cycle is now complete and it's time to get ready to time another race. Go back to live video by Xing out of the race that was just read. Select the next event in the event list in the race results tab. Arm the timing system. The gun goes off. Start recording. All the athletes have crossed. Stop recording. and advance the athletes to the finish line. Use the roller mouse or arrow keys, and enter the lane assignment or hip numbers, and you're done. Select the next race and arm the system. A feature that helps speed things up a little is the live bookmarking feature. This feature is recommended for races that are 400 meters or longer. Just before the athletes cross the finish line during the recording process, press the space bar on the computer's keyboard. When the recording is stopped, a green mark on the timeline signifies that an event took place at that time in the video. For our purposes, an athlete has crossed the finish line. You can then jump straight to that spot in the video by pressing Control and right or left arrow keys. This allows a race that is more spread out with its finishers to be read more efficiently. It's important to remember that this is not a precise read and that your left and or right arrow keys or the roller wheel on your mouse needs to be used to move the video frame by frame to detect the first frame the athlete's torso has first met the finish line. Also, the Eagle Eye timing system has the ability to start reading a race before it's finished. For instance, if there is a distance race with 10 people, the first eight have finished, but the last two have another lap to go. The race can be read during the last lap, so when the last two runners cross the finish line, they are the only two that need to be read after the race is complete. During the record process, simply click on the stick pin icon. And you can now review what has been recorded up to the point where you press the stick pin. Click on the stick pin to go back to live video. You can also just click on the timeline button here and drag it back. Click on the stick pin again to go to live video. You have visual confirmation that you're still recording. So while you're reading a race, you can still record. And when you hit the stop button, per normal recording, you can review the rest of the race. Another nice feature is the ability to start a race before the previous race is finished being read. For instance, if there are two heats of the two mile and if the first heat is only half read, the system can be armed and triggered starting the second heat. While reading a race, press Control F12 simultaneously on your computer's keyboard. Visual confirmation is given the system is armed in the upper right of the interface. The gun goes off, and visual confirmation is given the system was triggered. All while the operator continues to assign times and finishes reading the first heat long before the second heat is even close to being finished. When the first heat is finished being read, simply close out of heat 1 by clicking the red X here or by clicking on the camera tab to go back to live video. You have visual confirmation the system was triggered and has been running with the timecode running in the upper left of the interface.